Welcome back. It is time for module two. And in this module, I'm gonna do where I'm gonna do something quite exciting and quite different than what I've done so far. Everything that I did in the previous example, it was all client-side JavaScript. Drawing the map, graphing the, the global temperature data, loading images and displaying them on the web page with the fetch function, all of that was done with client-side JavaScript, meaning JavaScript written into the HTML page itself. But there are a lot of things that you, that I, that the people of the world who are doing this programming thing want to do working with data and APIs that you cannot do with client-side JavaScript only. So in this module, I'm going to show you server-side programming. And I'm going to use a JavaScript runtime called Node.js, which can be used for server-side programming. Now, the details of what server-side programming is and how I'm going to do it, that's to come. But this project that I'm going to build the fundamental thing, the reason why we need Node for this project is for data persistence. I want to gather some data and save it and get it back later. And this is not something that you can easily do without writing a server. You can certainly use somebody else's server. There's something called database as a service where I could just like, hey, you've got a server. Can I sign up for you and take my data? And then like I'll ask for it back later. But I'm actually going to create a server that's going to run on this laptop here. And I'm going to save the data here. Now, at some point, I'm also going to need to show you how to get that server to run somewhere else besides your own laptop, but that's a place to start. The project that I'm going to build in this module is called the Data Selfie App. And the Data Selfie App is an example project by Joey Lee, who's a designer and researcher. He teaches a class right here at NYU at, at, at ITP called the uh, qu called Quant Humanists. <laughs> it's about data and self-tracking. And so uh, Joey has uh, graciously given permission to use, to build on top of his examples as part of this series. In this video's description, I'll link to Joey's website so you can learn more about his work, as well as to the original GitHub repo for the Data Selfie app so you can find all of the code for the things that I'm going to show you. Now, in order to follow along with the code that I'm going to write and demonstrate as I build this project, you're going to need to download and install some stuff that you might not have on your computer already. It's going to be confusing because you might be using Windows or you might be using Mac and I'm using a Mac and oi, what, how are we going to solve this? All right, so let me give you a list of the things you need and help you with some resources to find those things. Number one, you need to install Node.js. That should be as easy as going to nodejs.org and following the installation instructions for your operating system. I do also have an entire video about downloading and installing Node and what Node is that I'll also link you to if you want more background there. You're also going to want some kind of console application, some command line terminal thing that you can open up and type commands in to run Node stuff on your computer. I'm using iTerm, which is an alternative to the Mac's uh, built-in terminal application. On Windows, I hear people like PowerShell, just the built-in command thing. Oh, and Git Bash. Git Bash is possibly a good one too. I actually have a whole workflow series where I go through all these bits and pieces of everything you need to have your environment set up to follow along with what I'm doing. So you can also just go and find that series, watch that, and come back here. But all you need is download Node, you need some kind of shell command prompt thing, <laughs> and you need a code editor. If you've got that, you're ready to go. So before I get to coding and building the actual project, let's, let's just talk for a second about what is Node. Now, if you go to the Node website, it says right there, Node.js is a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. Whew, that is a mouthful. Let's try to understand what that is. What do I mean by runtime? So normally when I'm typing JavaScript, I'm executing that stuff in the browser. The, the JavaScript has no meaning without the browser itself. Suddenly with Node, I can start to write JavaScript without the browser. It's its own runtime. The code runs on your computer. Let's look at what that means more practically speaking. So here I am with my command line access where I can type in commands. So hopefully you're here, you've downloaded your terminal app thingy, you've got it going, and you've installed Node. If I now type in N-O-D-E Node and hit enter, suddenly I have entered the JavaScript runtime. This is very similar to like the developer's console in the browser. But here I can start typing in some JavaScript stuff like const x equals 5. And then I can say x plus 2. And it's going to give me the number 7. So we can see this is a runtime, a place where I can write JavaScript and run JavaScript. Now, this is not typically how you would use Node. Typically, I wouldn't just be writing a lot of code just line by line in my terminal itself. I would write a bunch of JavaScript code in a JavaScript file, then execute it through a Node command. So let's see how that works. So I actually have a file called index.js. It's just a JavaScript file. And I could put something in like console.log, hello. <laughs> And I could say const x equals 5. And I could say something like, you know, console.log x plus 2. And let's see what happens. So now if I go back to the terminal, 
I can type node index.js, and this is me saying, hey, execute the code line by line in the order that it's written of what you find in that file. So I'm going to do that right now, and there we go. So what is it that I want to write in that index.js file? I mean, clearly like a console logging a bunch of things, I can see that it works, but why am I using node? The reason why I'm using node is that I want to create a server. A server is an application that runs and listens. And what it listens for is it listens for requests, people who want to connect to that server. So this server is going to be the central repository of the data of my application. All of the different clients, whether it's you on your phone or so-and-so on their laptop or somebody else on their internet connected toaster, can make a request to this server and grab some data. So I could come back over here and just start writing and look, I could Google, write a web server with node.js, I could find some code, I could start typing it in there, and I could create that server. It's gonna open up a connection and start listening. However, one of the ways that is very typical when working with Node is to find a package, a Node package that has some of the functionality you're looking for, install that package as like a library or an add-on and make use of that functionality. And the Node package that I want to use to create my web server is something called Express. Express is a, is a pretty minimal and very simple framework for making web servers. And it has the core functionality you need without a lot of bells and whistles. So we can kind of get up and running with it really quickly. So now, okay, we have Node. We can write JavaScript code in a thing and run it with Node. So in theory, we could write some JavaScript code to make a server, but we didn't need this package. How do we have access to the Node package express in our Node code? NPM stands for Node Package Manager, and it's a thing that manages all of our Node packages for us. You don't have to install that. In fact, when you installed Node, you also installed NPM Node Package Manager. If I want to use NPM with this project, I need package.json. The good news for you is that .json in package.json. You know what JSON is because we've worked with it. We have gotten data in JSON format, JavaScript object notation before in previous examples. Package.json is a special kind of file. It's basically the configuration file for your project. This is where all the meta information about our project, what node packages we're using, what our project is called, what our, and by project I mean web application, all of that's gonna be in package.json. To create the package.json file, I could, if I want, just make a file called package.json and type some stuff into it. But if, if I want to not make any mistakes, if I want to be sure, there's a nice command line utility from npm itself that will generate the file for me. And that is npm init. So as long as I've got node installed, if I'm in the project directory, I can type npm init, and it's gonna walk me through what I need in the package.json file. So one thing is I need a name. It's giving me, it's guessing, because the folder is called module two. Module two, that sounds good. I'll just hit enter. Version number, I'm not gonna worry about the version number. This is important if I'm building an open source library. I need to really keep track of version numbers, but I'm just kind of tinkering around here. Description, let me add something. This is the the data selfie app by Joey Lee. Uh, entry point index.js, that's the file that I want to put my code in that I want to run when I want to run this project. Uh, test command, I'm not worrying about testing right now. I'll refer you to some other videos about that if you're interested. Git repository, I'm not worrying about that. Keywords, uh, example, data, selfie, something like that. I think I could give some keywords separated by commas, author. This is a tricky one because I'm basing my work off of Joey's work. I'll put my name in there for right now and I'll make sure that everything is well documented of where it's coming from as I go. License, I'm gonna put in MIT. Uh, that's a very permissive license. It basically lets you do just about anything you want with the code. Uh, that's the same, I'm using the same license that Joey is using. Um, and then look at this, it's giving me, this is the information that is going in that package.json file. Does it look okay to me? It does, I'm gonna type yes. So if I go back to my code editor, I can see, there we go, here's the package.json file. All the information that's needed is in there, it's formatted correctly, I'm ready to go. But I'm not ready to go, right? The reason I was doing this in the first place is because I'm trying to get to the point where I can install the Node Package Express, the web framework I wanna use for creating my server. The reason why I need this package.json file is in this file is where I need to make reference to express. I need to say express is a package that I'm using for my project. But I don't want to edit this file directly, even though I could. What I want to do instead is say npm install express. Say npm install express and run that. Once I've run this, two things are going to happen. Number one is we're going to see express 
pop up in package.json as one of the dependencies. It is a dependency of this project. My project depends on the existence of the express node package, which I intend to use quite a bit in this code. Other thing that's happened is I have a new folder called node modules. And when I look into this folder, uh, oh my God, there's so much stuff in here. So this is the thing. Oh, look, there's express. What? I only said express, npm install express. I didn't say inherits or fresh or HTTP errors. It so happens that most node packages depend on other packages and the node package manager is smart enough to, to know that if I'm saying install express, it's gonna go grab everything else that it needs as well. So the nice thing is we don't have to manage that folder. Everything that we need will be in there, but don't be freaked out if you see all sorts of other things in there that you didn't think that you installed. They're coming along for the ride with express itself. I'm finally ready to write some code. So in order to have access to the express package, the node package express, I need to use require. So I could say const express equals require express. This is basically like an import statement. Hey, you know that node package I installed called express? Give me that thing and put it all in this variable called express. The reason why I want to do that is I want to create a web application. I'm going to call it app. And the way I'm going to create that is just call the express function. So that whole library, the whole node package express basically comes in as a big function that I can just execute and put in a variable. The first thing that I want to do in a web server, right? If I think back to my silly little diagram, here's the web server. It's listening, listening. Anybody want to connect to me is I need to start listening. So now I can listen. I can just actually say app dot listen. And when I want to start listening, I need to also specify something known as a port. Look at this. It's even telling me right here in Node what I need. The port is a unique number. It's like a numeric address at which I'm going to listen. So you could have different servers running different ports, and there are specific ports reserved for certain things, but it's beyond the scope of what I'm doing right here. I'm just going to pick some port that I know won't be used by something else, like 3000. And then I'm going to give a callback function here, which basically is like just the callback that happens once the server is listening. So I'll use my arrow syntax and just say console log, just say uh, listening at 3000. There are nicer ways I could clean this up, but this is the idea. Require express, create the app, and listen at a port. And there we go. I'm listening. I could connect. Should we connect? So I'd be very happy to accept connections with port 3000 right now, but I need to figure out like why am I here? Like what am I listening for? What kind of information am I gonna send back? So let's make a list of some of the things I want the server to do. And it's pretty simple for this app. Number one, I want to serve web pages. In other words, right now, I'm just a server running locally on this laptop at port 3000, but if I were to deploy my server to my website thingy URL.com and people type that address into their browser, I want to send them the HTML and JavaScript and CSS and all that stuff that I have made for them to be able to see in their browser. So to simplify that, let's just serve one page index.html. So when I open up my web browser, whatever content is in there, I should see. So that's, that's number one. There's other things that I want to do, of course, like I want to receive information and save it to the database, and then I want to be able to send information from the database back out. But actually, I'm going to get to that stuff as I go further and build this project. Let's actually just finish off this first part by serving a web page. So these are all the files I have already. I have package.json. We know about that. That's the configuration of my project. Index.js, that's my server code. This gets confusing because I want to have server code and client code. We've got to keep this stuff straight. <laughs> I have node modules. That's all of the stuff, all the node packages that I've installed. I don't need to look in there. There's also this package-lock file. It's kind of an important file. It's auto-generated. You don't need to touch it, but it's basically keeping track of the dependencies and versions of your packages. We can leave that aside. Index.html. That's the file that I want to see when I go and try to make a connection. Like right now, if I go to the browser and try to access localhost, that's my server running locally on this computer, at port 3000, I should see whatever the server has and is able to give to me. So I hit enter and it can't get anything because there's nothing there. I need to give it my index.html file. And the way that I can do that is by using express to host static files. So what do I mean by that? First, let me type it into the code. So I'm gonna say app.use, I wanna use express.static, and then what I need to give here is a directory name, or I could give one file, probably, I could probably actually, I might be able to say index.html, but better yet, I wanna make up a folder name. Now I'm gonna call it public because I'm gonna remind myself that anything that I put in that directory is publicly accessible from the URL 
at this, in this case, which is localhost colon 3000. So I'm gonna go back to my finder and I'm gonna make a folder, I'm gonna call it public, and I'm gonna put index.html in there. So now when I run this, I'm gonna rerun my server by saying node index.js. It's listening at port 3000. I go back and I refresh this page. It doesn't say cannot get anymore. The problem is there's nothing there. Well, it might be nice for me to actually add something to my index.html file. Like I could say data selfie app and I'm add a paragraph, hello. And I could start putting JavaScript in there and other things that we've seen so far. And now I'm going to hit refresh and there we go. I am serving up my web page. Now I haven't gotten that far. It might not seem we've gotten this far, but I'm really just setting up the foundation. I'm building the foundation for the house, this project that I'm going to build. What have I done so far? I've installed Node. I've set up a project with npm init, configuring a package.json file. I've written a little bit of code inside an index.js file using the node module express to create a web server. And that web server has one job, it has only one job, it's to serve up any files that are in the public folder. And the only file I have there right now is index.html. If I wanted to be really accurate about what's going on, I would type in index.html into the address bar itself and now when I hit enter, you see it's the same page, but I didn't have to do that originally because if you ever do a blank path, index.html is assumed. If you're able to reproduce exactly what I have here, just a basic node server with Express, serving up a single index.html file, you're ready to move on to the next video. And where I'm gonna start actually adding some features and trying some different ideas out. Um, before you go there, let me suggest a couple exercises you could try. Number one, maybe try to host more than one page. What if you have index.html and something else.html or two different directories? How could you do that? Could you have subdirectories inside of public and how would you access them? Could you put links so you could go back and forth between the two? That would be a good thing to try. I'll, I'll put some uh, solutions to that in the uh, links to that in the video description as well. You might also go and grab uh, something that you've made previously, maybe one of the uh, examples from module one and put that JavaScript and that uh, HTML content in index.html itself and see what happens. Because this ultimately, why I have plenty to do with the server, right? The whole thing about this project is adding, saving data to a database. And that's what I'm gonna do in the next video. I'm gonna start to add more stuff to the HTML page. And what I wanna demonstrate to you is how to use the geolocation API. So if it's available, you have to opt in and give permission. Uh, you can capture with this API, the latitude and longitude of where your computer or device is you know, whether it's accurate or not is an interesting question. And, and then later I'm going to show you how to send that to the server so that the server can save that along with a timestamp and maybe keep track of your location over time. That's something that I'm going to show you how to do. All right, so I'll see you in the next video where we'll look at the geolocation API.